Hey, what's up you guys? It's Judy here with my life as Geek Eye. On this channel, I create videos on product reviews, makeup tutorials, and lifestyle advice with the aim to entertain, educate, and enrich the lives of others. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love for you to join the Geek Eye family. And if you're returning here to my channel, then welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another chatty video. You guys seem to enjoy these chatty videos. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing the perfect subscriber tag. While I am a content creator here on YouTube, I am also a subscriber on many other channels here on YouTube and I believe that this tag was first created by a girl here on YouTube named Katie Marie. However, the girl that did inspire me to actually create this video was another fellow content creator here on YouTube named Andra Anthony and I'm going to leave Andra's video of her perfect subscriber tag video in the description box down below. Definitely go check her out and leave her some love and tell her that Judy sent you but for today I'm going to be doing my perfect subscriber tag video. If you want to see the answers that I have to this tag video then just keep on watching but before I go any further if you guys do enjoy my videos then you know what to do give this one a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already I do put new videos out every Monday Wednesday and Friday so you can turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my future uploads you can also follow me on my social media Facebook Instagram and Twitter all of them are life as geek guy and without further ado let's just get straight into this video question number one do you subscribe right away when you find a new channel or video or do you try new videos first generally if I enjoy the first video that I watch of a content creator then chances are I will subscribe because I usually get the vibe from the first video whether or not I actually am going to enjoy the vibe and the content that this creator is making not only that I'll generally go to their full channel and check out the overall vibe of their channel and see if I enjoy their videos so I'll watch one and if it hooks me I'll check out the channel see if I like the thumbnails or if the titles of the videos catch my attention or if I see that this channel puts a lot of effort into their thumbnails and the overall vibe of their channel then I'll appreciate that effort and I will subscribe to that channel but usually what will get me to subscribe to a channel is if what they're saying and how they say it and the message that they're bringing across to their audience captures me and rivets me then I will subscribe to that channel question number two does the make sure you subscribe mantra ever sway you to subscribe I'm gonna have to be careful with what I say here because I do have the make sure you subscribe mantra as well at the beginning and ending of all my videos but generally the way that the message is conveyed across is what will make me subscribe or not if it's like uh yeah um make sure you subscribe um like the video and yeah let's do this video if it's like that if the message is portrayed that way then chances are I won't really be I don't know, encourage to subscribe, which I'm like, generally if it's a please subscribe, if you want to, it's your choice, no one's forcing you sort of message, then most times I will subscribe. And not only that, I'll subscribe because I know how hard it is to prompt people to press the subscribe button. I'm not one of those people who presses the subscribe button, comments down below, sub for sub, or I've followed you, I hope you follow me back. I'm not one of those people and neither do I subscribe only to unsubscribe if that person doesn't respond. I don't do that. I subscribe if I want to subscribe and I hope that that is the same encouragement that I give to you guys. Only subscribe if you want to subscribe. I'm not forcing you, I'm not wringing your arm. And besides, subscribing is kind of pointless if you don't watch the videos anyway. So it's kind of like, if you like the video, then subscribe. Otherwise, don't if you don't want to. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that deep. <laughs> Question number three, how many channels do you have the notification bell turned on for? I have... I believe I have four channels. Oh no, five. I think it's five. Six. <laughs> There's a few. There's actually a few that I have notification bells turned on for. The first one is Tati Westbrook, Glam Life Guru here on YouTube. The next one is Kathleen Lights. The next one is Raw Beauty Christie. The next one is Jackie Ina. Another one is Christian Baker. He does inspirational videos and encouraging messages. They're just like quick five minute videos, but he always has the best message and it always seems to come at the right time of life. His messages are really, really encouraging. He is a small content creator and no one really seems to know about him, but I'm gonna actually leave Christian Baker's YouTube channel listed in the description box down below. Definitely go check him out. He has some very, very encouraging and inspirational things to say. I have Katie at Lusterlux and Desi Perkins notification bells turned on as well. Oh, and, and Glam and Gore. I think I have a few others turned on, but those are the ones I know that I get the notification that they've uploaded and I actually go and watch their videos. I have a few other notification bells turned on for a few other channels, but I don't actually go and watch those videos straight away. Question number four, do you watch every video from your subscription feed or only your favorites? 
Man, honestly, if I watched every single video from my subscription feed, then I wouldn't even have time to film and edit my videos for you guys. Yes, I really only watch the favorites. The favorites are the ones that I might have mentioned before, or maybe even more a more narrowed down list of the favorites that I mentioned before. The four that I know I actually put time aside to watch their videos is Tati Westbrook, Kathleen Light, Rob Beauty Christie, and Glam and Gore. Question number five. How many channels do you never miss an upload for no matter how busy you are? Probably the same four that I mentioned. Tati, Kathleen, Rob Beauty Christie, and Glam and Core. Those are probably the four that I will never miss an upload of. Question number six. What kind of commenter are you? Now, this is not including the responses to the comments on my videos. I'm a commenter on other people's videos where if I really, really enjoyed it or I resonated with something that they said or I love the same product that they are mentioning in their video, I will comment those sort of things or if it's a youtuber that I really resonated with on a personal level something that they've shared about their life and I've sort of gone through the same struggle or the same thing I will generally leave a comment saying hey girl you're gonna get through this I know this is difficult or the sort of comment that will encourage people to keep on doing what they're doing know that they are loved know that they are appreciated and as a content creator myself I know that these comments are read and will go a very very long way in encouraging a content creator I know a lot of people seem to be quite unattainable since they are sitting behind a camera lens and they are talking about products and makeup because a channel will have a niche they won't really be talking about real life things so sometimes it might be hard to connect on a deeper level so when a youtuber will talk about something a little bit more personal something from their life that is not in any way related to the niche that they are in on their youtube channel when they share about things like that i will generally connect on that level and send a message of encouragement or of love or appreciation to those youtubers because they are still human and i know that these comments are very very encouraging because i love it when i receive those sort of comments myself so yeah that's the kind of commenter i am question number seven do you skip ads or watch well this really depends on how much time I have allocated in my day to watch these videos generally in the morning when I get up to get ready for work I will have a notification from either Tati Westbrook or Kathleen lights that they've uploaded a video so I will go and watch those videos but generally I will skip the ads because I'm on a limited time to get ready so I really just want to watch the video while I'm getting ready to leave for work However, in the afternoons when I've got a bit of time after work and I want to sit down and watch these videos, if I really am enjoying the intro of the video, then I will let an ad play throughout the middle of the video. I know that letting these ads play throughout the middle of the video helps out the content creator. And as a content creator myself, the way that I watch videos has really changed and the way that I comment and interact on those videos has also changed because I know how much hard work it takes to have these videos seen and appreciated and put out there. The filming editing everything the whole process of putting that one video out there is a lot of hard work and so part of showing my appreciation for that video is also watching ads question number eight do you speed up videos again it's also a matter of how much time that I have in my day my days are very very busy I work full-time job I also do try and work out I film and edit videos in all my spare time also my days are chock-a-block full sometimes I will forward not very often I am the sort of watcher who will watch a video in its entirety especially for people like Tati Westbrook, Kathleen Lights and Rob Beauty Christie those people I will generally watch a video the whole way through if it's a smaller content creator who doesn't have that much experience sometimes if I'm not interested in what they have to say again because I am a content creator I know how much watch time is so important to us as creators so if I'm not interested in what they have to say, I might mute the video and go off and do a bit of something else on my computer. So while I might not exactly watch the content, I'll still let the video play so that it still counts for the content creator. If that, I hope that makes sense for you guys. If you're a content creator yourself, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you are merely a watcher, a subscriber, or a, like a consumer, then you might know what I'm talking about. I'm just a, just a quick explanation for you guys. If you are a subscriber and you are merely a content consumer, then you need to know that it's not so much the view that counts as much as the watch time that you allow to play throughout the video. So if you think I wanna support this YouTuber and you click on the video, 
and then click off straight away, that's not really going to count. You might have clicked on the video, but what the YouTube algorithm actually counts is the watch time, the amount of time that you allow that video to play. So as much as we as content creators appreciate the view that you've given us, we also really appreciate it when you either watch the video in full or you allow the video to play in full. You don't necessarily have to watch the video, but if you do enjoy someone's content and you do want to support them, then it's the watch time that really matters. And often hitting the thumbs up button on the videos also helps a lot. Question number nine, do you click affiliate links or use affiliate codes? I don't really click affiliate links because I don't come across them very often in very many videos, but I will use affiliate codes. I for one am someone who really enjoys saving money. So if someone's affiliate code is going to help me save money, especially if it's someone whose content I really enjoy, then I will use their affiliate code. Chances are if I am buying something, it is because of the recommendation of a content creator that I have watched. And if I'm watching them, then it means that I like them. So using their code will also support them if that makes any sense. I don't have any qualms whatsoever about using someone's affiliate code because one, for me, it's a bit of a win-win. I save money and they get money. I'm all about supporting the creator. If the time ever comes where I have an affiliate code or an affiliate link, if you guys enjoy my videos, then I would really love for you to support me in that way as well. But be as it is right here, right now, I don't have that sort of thing because I am such a small content creator. And I'm just hoping that the good support and the good vibes that I put out in the world by using a content creator's code that I really, really enjoy their content and it supports them, I'm kind of hoping that in some way it'll come back to me one day. <laughs> Question number 10, what's your preference when it comes to video length, your sweet spot? This is a little bit of a struggle for me. I have been trying to keep my makeup tutorials under 15 minutes. Generally around 12 to 13 minutes is probably the max amount of time that I have been able to squash my makeup tutorials down to because I know I for one don't really like to watch a makeup tutorial that takes 20 minutes. Not unless it's like a chatty get ready with me. If the video itself is a chatty get ready with me or a story time, I can sit and watch that video for maybe 20 minutes to half an hour. If it's someone like Raw Beauty Christie or Kathleen Lights or even Tati Westbrook, I can sit and watch a 40 minute video from these ladies very, very easily. As long as I enjoy the content creator, I can sit and watch a video of any length of time from them. For me personally, I find that my videos that are between seven to 12 minutes are the ones that are most watched. But then again, it really depends on the topic of the video. So yeah, I'm not gonna say I'm only gonna watch a video if it's only 12 minutes long or certain minutes long. It really depends on the topic of the video, the way that the message is being conveyed, and maybe the overall vibe of the video itself. I don't really have a sweet spot in video length. If I'm riveted and captured in the first five minutes, chances are I'm just going to watch the entirety of the video no matter how long it is. Question number 11, do you thumbs up most videos? Yes, I actually do, even before I watch the video. If I've clicked on a video, it's usually because I want to watch it. So if I want to watch it, I will thumbs up a video. I also know, again, as a content creator myself, I know how much that simple action helps out the content creator so, so much. So I would like to pay it forward and give the video a thumbs up as well. Question number 12, do you ever thumbs down a video? No, I don't, I really don't. Again, if I don't enjoy something, I'm just gonna move on and not watch it. I'm not gonna go and actively thumbs down someone's video, although I know even that action triggers something in the YouTube algorithm that people are engaged by the video, even a thumbs down is an action of engagement, but I'm not gonna go ahead and thumbs down a video because if you don't like it, then just move on. There's no point thumbs downing something in my opinion because while it is still a point of engagement according to the YouTube algorithm, the person receiving that thumbs down on the other side is again, a person. They've got feelings, they've got thoughts. If they get a thumbs down, they're wondering what did I do wrong in this video. From my viewpoint, if you're going to give a video a thumbs down, then there is something you didn't like about it. Instead of a thumbs down, I would prefer you go down to the comments, let me know what you didn't enjoy about the video so that I could go on to create more content that won't elicit a thumbs down, that will improve my content. It'll give me constructive criticism to make my content better for you guys. So no, I don't give thumbs downs to videos. I would much rather, I would much rather either move on or give the constructive criticism in the comments below. Question number 13, do you share other YouTubers videos on your social media? I guess 
YouTube is a social media platform, so if I reference someone else's video in my video, then I will link their video in my video, if that makes any sense, just like I've done with Andrew Anthony's video down in the description box down below. I don't really talk about other YouTubers' videos per se on my Instagram or anything like that, but I will either tag them or credit someone if it was their makeup look that inspired me, but not necessarily share someone else's video, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's it for this perfect subscriber tag video, you guys. Let me know if you enjoyed it. I know that this one isn't a very popular or common one, but I thought it would be fun to do and to share my thoughts and opinions on this perfect subscriber tag. If you guys enjoyed this video, then you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to <laughs> before you leave if you haven't already. I do put new videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so you can turn on the notification if you want to. If you don't want to miss any of those future uploads, you can also follow me on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of them are life as geek guy. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being here. I really, really, truly mean it when I say I appreciate that you've chosen to spend your time here with me today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. But chances, but usually what will get to me is who else? Who else? Who else? Notification from top. And and so part of and so part of by using so a content creator